Jesus, I, I surrender, make me Savior, holy Thine. Let me feel Thy Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? Father God, we know that the forces of evil would want to be in this place 
But we surrender all to you right now, God. Knowing that no weapon formed against us can prosper. Knowing that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we surrender all because we know faithful is our God. We pray for enlightenment. We pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding. Most of all, we pray to be empowered to do the will of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we thank you in faith. Amen. I want to share with you for a few moments on the subject, Why Seek Ye the Living Among the Dead? Why seek ye the living among the dead? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 24, and we will start reading at verse 1. Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. And we will read down to verse 9. Luke 21, 24. Verse 1 through 9. If you have it, say amen. I still hear a few pages turning. Luke 24, verse 1 through 9. And it reads, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the supplica, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hand of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James had watched the torment that Jesus endured that Friday. They watched him give up the ghost and they saw him hang his head and die. They watched how he was spat upon and, and how he was ridiculed. The Bible says that on the first day of the week after the Sabbath had passed, they come with their act of love and respect to anoint the body of their Lord and Savior. But there is a one problem. He is not there. They expect to find him still to be lying in the tomb. Yes, they come. And yes, they bring spices and ointment to honor Jesus. But they were looking to do these precious things to a man to a Christ who was dead and still in the tombs. How often today do we act like these ladies that we come looking for Jesus in the tombs? We know that he is not in the tomb literally, but, but we come 
with an ideology that he is dead to us because of our sin and sinful nature. We cross the threshold of this sanctuary, of this holy place, not believing that God is able, that he is willing, that he will because he's dead. We come, many of us, to this house not with expectancy that he is alive and well and willing to care for us. And we literally don't expect blessings from God today. That is a sad state of affairs. That you come here to this house not expecting anything. Can we be truthful? Can we be real? We have been bombarded by the enemy so long for so many times that he has taught us, he has convinced us that to us, God is dead. And how he wants to perpetuate that ideology is because he says it's your fault. You're the reason that you're not blessed. You're the reason that, that you don't feel the presence of God when you pray. You're the reason that, that you don't have the answers that you're looking for. And so even though we come, even though we get dressed up, we're coming to the tombs. We're coming to the tombs as though God is dead. Our marriages are dead. Our children are acting like they are dead to us and to God. There is no life in our homes, our jobs, or our lives, period. So we come to the house of God dead. Somebody need to hear me. Because whether you know it or not, all the influences around you, everything you engage in, every encounter influences your mind. And your mind tells your hand what to do. So you come to the house of God where God is, but you don't come with an expectancy. There are folk who would rather have more expectancy from Santa Claus. They have more expectancy from Santa Claus than they do from God. You push your little children. Go up there. Tell them what you want. Uh, tell them what you want. So, so it'll be on the tree. Make sure you're nice and not naughty. We have more expectancy from Santa Claus than we do from God. Not quiet in the house. So we come to the house of God dead, believing and acting as though Jesus is really dead. There have been folk who have come to the porch and they come in and I say, yeah, I invited a couple folk. And they come in and say, uh, uh, yeah, I said, how, how do you like the service? They say, uh, 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 it, it, it was okay. I said, what was the problem? Didn't seem like nobody knew Jesus. I didn't see any celebration. I didn't see any praise and hallelujahs when they heard that God is still alive. I don't I didn't hear anybody recognize that they didn't have to wake up this morning. They could have been on a cooling board or could have been in a hospital room. I didn't hear anybody proclaiming the name of God, that God is a good God like we just saw. 
but you still got a house to go to. You still got a car to drive. You still got a few dollars in your pocket. He's a good God. And guess what? If he'll do that while you his enemy, what do you think he'll do when y'all join hands and you become walking as one? What do you think he'll do then? Because the truth is, we know we're not living up to all that we should and could be doing. But God still blesses us. The Bible says he allows the rain to fall on the just as well as the unjust. He still blesses us. I know for certainty that there are those of us who made your preparation and your way to the house of God to meet a dead Jesus. You see, you're, you're going to a funeral. You have a different mindset. Sister Mike, you, you got a different mindset when you go to a funeral than when you go into a family reunion. When you go into a funeral, you're all solemn, quiet, Reserved. You don't want to make no jokes because you know folk are broke up in heartaches and pain. Anybody, anybody hearing me? So you, you, you don't even make yourself known. You kind of back up and, and how you doing? How you doing? You, you reserved, quiet. You go to family and you, hey, let's get this party started. Come on now. Everybody know you there. You have a different mentality. You have a different mindset. This is God's house, and he is still alive. The Bible says he rose early that Sunday morning with the keys of death and hell in his hand, saying, oh, great. Ah, have mercy. There are those, there are times when we come to the house of God and we treat it like he is dead. And so you're seeking him this morning is not as if he is alive and is touched by our infirmities. You're seeking him is not as if you can come and reason with him and he will make your sins white as snow. Don't you know that if you ever got the thought right in your mind that he says, come on, you're filthy, you're nasty, you're wretched, but come and I'll give you clean clothes. I'll wash you up. I'll put you in your right place. Don't you know if you ever get that concept that you will stay in the presence of God? It's not like he won't suffer you more than you can bear. It's not like nothing can separate you from the love of God. If we understand these things, our attitude, our encounter, our coming before God would be different. We wouldn't be seeking the living among the dead. Just like the angels of God asked the women who came to the tomb to seek Jesus, they asked us, why seek ye the living among the dead? I remember growing up in the projects. One day we were out playing basketball on the court, and the court was in the center of the projects, and my apartment building was like two behind the court. And this particular day, I was out there, Elder Floyd, I was playing pretty good. My game was on. And I was talking trash, and folk were talking back to me. Some of the guys talking trash back to me. And then it went beyond basketball. 
So about three or four of them wanted to jump me. So I was pretty fast back then. So I took off running, going to my apartment building. And I'm calling out, help, 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 help. And by the time I got past the first building, I could see a silhouette standing in the door. Talking about God being alive now. Silhouette standing in the door. And I'm hollering out, help, help. I'm running. And all of a sudden, I saw my mama step out through the door. And when I saw Joe Palingo, I immediately stopped in my steps, turned around, and began to face my enemy because my God was not dead. He was alive. It changes your attitude. It changes your worship. When you know what God has done for you. And what he's willing to do for you. I hear we talk about spirit led. Holy Ghost fed worship. In the house. But we got to come in knowing that God is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive and alive forevermore. But why did they go to the tombs thinking that Jesus was still there? Sure, it was a, a great act of worship, a great honor for them to go with spices wanting to anoint the body of Christ. But why did they go? Why did they think God was still there? First, they thought he was still dead because they forgot his words and promises. Turn with me to Luke 24. We're going to be finished in a few moments. Luke 24 and verse 44. Luke, the 24th chapter and verse 44. First, they forgot his words and promises. That's when we go to the tombs, when we forget God's words and promises. Luke 24, 44, if you have it, say amen. The Bible says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be what, everybody? Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Jesus was letting them know. He says, I'm going to have to suffer. I'm going to have to go through these things. I will be crucified, but I will rise on the third day. He tells us today, he says that if you're going to follow me, you got to pick up a cross. There will be suffering in your path. There is an enemy who's trying to kill you and destroy you, but I, he says, I will see you through. They forgot his promises. And his words. Now turn over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. Toward the back of the Bible. 2 Peter chapter 3. And verse 9. Why did they still go to the tombs? Why were they looking for the living Jesus among the tombs? 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. If you haven't said amen. The Bible says the Lord is not what everybody he is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is what? Long-suffering to us. Were. Hey, you should have shouted right there. The Bible is saying, Peter says, that I can tell you that I did a lot of foolishness. I talked a lot of ignorant stuff when I was with Jesus. But he never gave up on me. That's why we encourage you to come to the house of God. That's why we tell you that God is alive. Because he is long suffering. He will linger. He will petition. He will plead. He will keep you until you come to your senses. The devil tells us, no, no, don't go to him, don't talk to him, don't give your life to him. And 
we come here thinking that we're coming before a dead Jesus. But he's alive. He wants to save us and to bless us. He wants to use us. Says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God already knows the wretched, filthy, nasty creatures we are. But he reaches out to us. He keeps us. He blesses us. Then turn over to uh, John 14. John chapter 14, verse 25 through 27. John 14. Talking about why they went to the tombs because they first forgot. His words and promises. John chapter 14, verse 25 through 27. If you have it, say amen. The Bible says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you how many things? And bring all things to your what? Whatsoever I have said unto you. And then verse 27 says, peace. Come on now. This is why you search for the living God. Not the dead God among the tombs. You search for the living God because he says, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to who, everybody? Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your what? Neither. Now let me tell you something. The truth of the matter is, if he were dead, then I, would, uh, I wouldn't hold you accountable for tr not trying to have his peace. For being afraid. But he ain't dead. The reason I know he ain't dead. He showed up in a hospital room. Last Sabbath afternoon. He performed surgery. On Sunday. Yes uh, last week. I know. That my redeemer liveth. I told. I told. I told Dr. Smith over there, I said, I, I, I feel like I need to apologize, but I can't apologize. When the doctor was talking and he said, y'all got any questions? I was like, uh, 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 well, really we don't because we've already consulted another doctor. Elder right. right. Floyd and I were sitting there and, 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 and I watched that because this was the living God, I watched God's spirit fill me. And I'm saying stuff that I'm, I'm looking at myself say. But God said he'll give you peace. And I told them, with all the bad things the doctor was saying, oh, she may have brain damage. Oh, her heart took a beating. Oh, we, we don't know what is going to be the outcome. I said, hold up. He said, peace. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? First, because they forgot his words and promises. Secondly, they forgot his position. Yes, he was born in a manger. Yes, he was from Nazareth. Yes, there were questions about his birth. But he was born king of kings, lord of lords, and the son of God. They forgot his position. Sometimes we, we forget who God is. You might have to have Roger sing, God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves. Come on now. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never... He's never come short. 
That's the living God. That's the living God. He's never come short of his word. Turn over to John 14. John 14. Yeah, Roger, we may have to have that for the appeal. John 14. John, I'm sorry, John 10. John 10, verse 14 through 16. Talking about his position. John 10, verse 14 through 16. John 10, verse 14 through 16. If you haven't, say amen. The Bible says, I am the what? And know my sheep and am known of mine. You see, when you are God's sheep, you know his position. He's the shepherd. Verse 15, he says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. See, you got to know that. When you have a God, when you have a shepherd who will fight your battles, he will fight the enemy hand to hand, and you already know, just like David with Goliath, he's going to be victorious. Why you can't praise him? Why do you allow many things to overwhelm you? Here's what I told Sister Smith. She still had the, what's that, the trait? Trait tooth in her mouth? Oh, is that what it's called? The trait? Yeah. The, the tooth, yeah, in her mouth. But she, she, was, she, was, she was conscious. And Doc was there. I walked in. She had the tooth there. And I walked up to her. And some people, if, see, if it had been other folk there besides me and him, they probably would have kicked me out. But I had already consulted the great physician. I told her this. I said, you do know that this ain't about you. Is that what I said, Doc? I said, she was laying there, tube in her mouth. Scar down her cheeks. I said, this ain't about you. And somebody, if they had been there to hear me say that, would have said, how dare you? She's been in pain. She's had a heart attack. She uh, is going through all of this. And you say it ain't about her? I said, it ain't about her. I said, the truth is, you've been chosen. To be a vessel. You've been blessed. You, you, you need to hear me now. I'm talking about the living God. I said to her, you've been blessed to have a heart attack. I said because, and, and, and I'm telling you as God is my witness, I didn't, these words, I'm looking at these words, listening to them come out of my mouth. They were not of me. I said, you've been blessed to have a heart attack. So that God can use you as a witness. You, you, you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Man with cancer? You, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, Earl Mike, you know what I'm talking about with, with a double bypass? You, I said to her, I said, if it was just about your salvation, he could have let you go to sleep just like that. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all not with me yet. You ain't with me yet. If it was just about your salvation, she's standing there with the tube. I'm standing right there on the bed. I said, if it was just about your salvation, he could have let you go to sleep. You would have been signed, sealed, and soon to deliver. I said, but this heart attack wasn't about you. 
It's about all your family. It's about all those who look at you. And, and, and when they come and say, oh, we're so sorry, you say, don't cry for me. I serve a living God. And I said to her, you understand? I went back the next day. She had the trait out. I said, you heard me? She said, Pastor, I heard every word. She said, you right. I know that this scar on my chest is, is just a testimony. It's, it's a scar of glory. You know what she said, Doc? She said, this is a scar of glory that, 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 that when folk come and, and, and I show it to them, the top of it, they, they look and say, oh, I'm so sorry you went there. You said, no, no, I'm praising God I went through it. Because now... I know that my Redeemer liveth. That's what God wants for all of us. He wants us to know that he lives. When we come to the understanding that we serve a risen Savior, and he's in the world today that he lives oh wow 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 do you know how our perspective will change Sabrina they don't even know half your testimony Sabrina has about a hair size opening where her blood flows through. A hair size. You know what a hair? Like the hair on your head. There she is right there. There she is right there. She knows her Redeemer lives. You can't discourage her with any problems, with any possibilities. You can't, discover, you can't, you can't discourage her. God wants all of us to know that no matter what we're facing, He lives. Don't look for him among the tombs. You look for him as a living savior. The Bible says that, that when you call on him, that, that he, like a mother hen, will take you and tuck you out under his wings. My soul shall abide. The songwriter said, safely abiding forever. Solomon's porch. Stop looking for the living among the dead. You ask God to give you his promises to stand on, to know that whatever you ask him, he is willing, ready, and able to answer. You let the devil know, you put the devil on notice. You can't cause me to doubt the God of heaven. You can't cause me to turn my back on the Savior. You can't separate me because even when I want to leave God, he grabs me and hold on, good gracious. He grabs me and God holds on to me. Until I come to my 
till I come to my senses. That's the living God. He said, nothing can separate you from me. You like, God, you ain't do this for me. You ain't do that. I'm done with you. He grabs you. And why are you trying to walk away? He said, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm still here. I'm with you. I'm going to work it out for you. Let me order your steps. That's why I told Sister Smith, this ain't about you. You just being used as a vessel for God. Don't you know that when the Hebrew boys came through that fire furnace, don't you know when Daniel came out of the lion den that they stood up shaking their head, flexing. Hey! Our God is an awesome God. Where are they? For all our praise. Go ahead, Roger. Oh, hallelujah. He moves all pain, oh. misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow oh. way. Oh. Keep oh. my life clean oh. every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I never turn back. God is God. And I never turn back. 